why trying something new can change how you think about the old today we are going to talk about why it's essential to step out of your comfort zone as a developer and learn new technologies new languages frameworks and packages this is a tweet from the founder of Vercel and it beautifully sums it up you don't have to fall in love with every new shiny tool in the market and you don't have to adopt them but trying them out and exploring them refines your mental model and makes you a better developer learning something new is a lot like setting up a new fingerprint in your phone the whole fingerprint does not get loaded in one shot instead every scan collects different kinds of information different lines from different parts of your fingerprint until it's complete in the same way when you try different things when you try new technologies all those experiences add to your developer fingerprint it's this tiny incremental insights from different areas of technologies that form a more or a clearer picture of what you already know for instance react started making much more sense to me when I worked on Chrome extensions. The way components manage state and handle lifecycle events differently when I saw them in constrained environment of a browser extension. Suddenly, the patterns I had been using for web apps became clearer because I was forced to adapt them to a new context. In the same way, Golang's error returning feature is another example. First, it felt clunky compared to exceptions in other languages, but then I tried FTS in TypeScript, which uses a similar approach and seeing error handling implemented differently but effectively in two separate environments deepened my appreciation for Go's design and how it encourages you to explicitly deal with errors. When I tried Rust, I fell in love with its pattern matching, a feature that's intuitive, powerful and makes the code much cleaner. And later on, when I encountered ES pattern in TypeScript, it immediately felt familiar and I realized how much inspiration the library had taken from Rust. And by exploring Rust first, I was able to adopt and appreciate ES pattern more effectively in TypeScript. Exploring .NET, which comes from the same developers who created TypeScript, gave me a deeper understanding of some of TypeScript script's design decisions. For example, concepts like generics and type inference made more sense when I saw how .NET approaches similar problems with its own strong typing system and its own flavor of generics. Seeing how similar ideas are applied across different ecosystems often gives you a broader perspective on why things are designed the way they are. Diving into SQL databases like Postgres made me revisit JavaScript's array and object manipulation methods with a fresh set of eyes. When you're writing SQL queries, you think in terms of filtering, joining, and projecting, which is strikingly similar to how you use methods like .filter, .map, .reduce in JavaScript. And the concepts are not new, but approaching them in a different domain like SQL helps solidify your understanding in your original domain. When I started exploring GraphQL, it reshaped how I thought about designing APIs. The concept of fetching only the data you need felt revolutionary compared to the traditional REST API methods. But then, going back to REST APIs, I realized I could replicate some of that same flexibility using query parameters or fields selection techniques. GraphQL taught me to think more deeply about how APIs could be designed with the client's needs in mind. Even when I was not using GraphQL directly, trying WebAssembly or WASM introduced me to a new way of thinking about performance. Writing a simple WASM module in Rust and running it in the browser made me appreciate how performance critical tasks can be offloaded to a low level language while still working seamlessly with JavaScript. This made me rethink how I approached performance bottlenecks in my JavaScript applications, even when I was not using WASM. Exploring serverless platforms like AWS Lambda changed my perspective on how I approach backend design. The pay per use model made me rethink long running processes and optimize functions for short stateless executions. When I returned to traditional server setups, I found myself thinking more about optimizing server uptime and costs in a way I had not considered before. When I experimented with Elixir and Phoenix framework, its lightweight processes and functional programming paradigm made me rethink how I approached concurrency and scalability. Returning to Node.js after that, I started appreciating how asynchronous JavaScript and worker threads could solve similar problems, even if they felt less elegant than Elixir's approach. Exploring Web3 technologies like Solidity and Smart Contracts taught me to think about immutability and state in a completely different way. Writing code that lives on the blockchain forced me to consider every small change's cost and impact. And in the front-end side, creating a front-end for a web app which is Web3 enabled uh, is very hard because you have to maintain for different different states of the blockchain, you have 
to care about the success of the transaction the failure of the ch- transaction the current status of the transaction it, you have to consistently care about a lot of different types of states from the user state to the blockchain state and the server state at the same time which is very different from our traditional front end system so when i returned to more traditional systems i started paying closer attention in the back end to the long term implications of schema migrations and versioning and in the front end i was a more robust ui developer because i paid a lot of attention to the users experience while i was designing front end for blockchain applications experimenting with next js taught me to think about server side rendering and static side generation in a way that i had not considered before with client side react apps it made me realize how much faster apps can load when the server does the heavy lifting beforehand even when working with plain react or other frameworks i started thinking more about loading strategies and rendering patterns even if ssr was not directly involved exploring the rust ownership and borrowing system completely transformed how i thought about memory management even though javascript handles memory allocation and dui allocation automatically working with rust gave me a deeper understanding of what happens under the hood when i returned to javascript i started paying more attention to memory leaks and how to avoid them especially in long running node js servers and in go i started paying more attention to the whole garbage collection experience and allocation in the heap and all the concept related to memory management that i had gained a deeper understanding while i was studying rust while i was working with rust when i worked with mongodb its schema less nature felt liberating but also chaotic times trying postgres afterward made me appreciate the rigidity of schema enforcement and how migrations could ensure data integrity but the experience of using mongodb helped me adapt better to use cases where flexible data models like json fields in postgres could solve specific problems when i tried typescript strict mode for the first time i began to see how much implicit behavior i had been relying on in javascript then i explored elm a purely functional language with a strict type system and it took those ideas even further returning to typescript i found myself writing stricter safer code and using advanced typescript features like discriminated unions and conditional types more confidently exploring kubernetes config maps and secrets gave me a new way of thinking about managing environment variables before that i'd used .env files or hard code variables and learning how to separate configuration from code entirely made me rethink how i handled deployments even when kubernetes was not in the picture when i tried building microservices using fastify it introduced me to a new ways of structuring backend apis with focus on speed and modularity it made me rethink how i approached monolithic architectures even when working with monoliths i started designing my code base with modular services in mind inspired by the routing and plugin patterns i learned in fastify experimenting with erpc was a complete game changer for my typescript based projects it allowed me to eliminate the boilerplate associated with api schemas by using end to end type safety this experience reshaped how i thought about validating data in traditional rest apis and i started using tools like zord more effectively to ensure type safety across backend and frontend when i explored server components in nextjs it made me rethink how i approached data fetching in react apps i started seeing the benefits of moving logic to the server for performance and security even in traditional react apps this mindset carried over to how i use libraries like swr or react query treating them as complementary tools rather than the sole way of fetching data trying cloudflare workers opened my eyes to the possibilities of edge computing it wasn't just about the speed it was about rethinking how requests are handled globally after working with cloudflare workers i began designing apis or cdns to leverage proximity and caching even when edge computing was not directly in use deploying a front end and back end app in aws using ec2 nginx pm2 github actions and a custom domain gave me a complete understanding of how http works behind the scenes here is how setting up nginx as a reverse proxy taught me how http requests flow between clients and servers i learned how to configure nginx to handle both front end static files and back end api routes and how headers caching and response clouds play a crucial role in optimizing the user experience for example setting up gzip compression and proper cache control headers made me realize how small tweaks in http headers can significantly impact performance using pm2 to manage the back end node js process gave me insight into how http servers work under the hood it wasn't just about starting a node js server it was about keeping it alive handling crashes gracefully and ensuring high availability setting up health checks or pm2 also taught me about http status codes like 200 or 503 service unavailable in monitoring the app's health setting up github actions for ci cd brought a deeper understanding of how understanding of http in terms of how code travels from my local machine to production i learned about secure http connections through https or ssl tls certificates and how tools like let's encrypt and certbot automate certificate generation and renewal integrating github actions to trigger deployments gave me a better appreciation for how http powers apis that facilitate automation configuring a custom domain tied all of the above process together from updating dns records to setting up a a record that points to my ec2 instances ip address i gained a better 
understanding of how HTTP requests rely on domain resolution, the transition from the domain to the server via Nginx solidified concepts like host headers and URL rewriting. Deploying the frontend separately from the backend highlighted the importance of course configuring the backend to allow the frontend to access API resources taught me about the nuances of HTTP request methods like options and the role of pre-flight requests in securing cross-origin communications. Whole process of debugging issues like misconfigured engine and incorrect course headers or HTTP2, HTTPS redirections taught me how HTTP status codes and logs are indispensable for problem solving. Seeing requests flow through the browser's developer tools, Nginx logs and backend logs give me a full stack understanding of how an HTTP request is handled end to end. Overall, deploying an app this way was not just about getting it live, it was about understanding the life cycle of an HTTP request from the moment it leaves the client to how it's processed by the server and back again. It gave me a hands-on grasp for concepts like routing, caching, headers, security and scalability. The real magic of trying new languages, libraries and technologies is not just about the tools themselves. It's about building better problem solving skills and a deeper understanding of the tools you already know. It forces you to think differently to develop better mental models and bring fresh ideas back to your existing stack. So take that leap, experiment with that library you've been hesitant to try, write a hello world in that language that seems intimidating. You never know which idea will unlock your next big breakthrough. So keep exploring, keep learning and keep growing your developer fingerprint.